you all know that being a web developer, there are so many perks, especially being able to work from home, work remotely, have a decent salary, as well as having so many different freelancing opportunities to maybe start your own business. Or maybe you can just be a YouTuber like me and so many other YouTubers on the internet. But today, I'm gonna break all your dreams. I'm gonna just crush it because I'm gonna break the bad news to you that sometimes web developers are might not just meant for you and we're gonna talk about the dark side of being a web developer. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I am Vicky May and I am a web developer, a software engineer living in New York City. And in this channel, you are going to learn so many things about web development, learning how to code, and all things related to tech. So as you know that today's topic, I'm gonna break the bad news to you. So are you sit up tight and buckle up? Let's go. Dark side number one is net competitive. You heard me right. It's actually really competitive to become a web developer, especially to landing your first job. Nowadays, in the era of the internet, there are so many opportunities for you to learn how to code, especially learning web development. It's very intuitive to just Google and follow tutorials and bam, there you go, you become a web developer. However, it's really hard to compete with other people because you are potentially competing with people who either graduated from universities or people who actually graduated from a training school such as a coding bootcamp. There are just so many ways that you can learn web developments nowadays and there are so many people are going for that. I mean, that being said, I don't want it to just like crush all your dreams. Obviously, every single job is going to be competitive because you're basically competing with a ton of people who are looking for the same job as well. It's all about like, you know, the demand and the supply, right? It's possible, it's doable. I mean, I, I've achieved it. I've seen so many people achieve it. It's definitely doable. Just that it's not going to be a easy route. Dark side number two, you're gonna be sitting long hours. I mean, yeah, sitting at your desk is terrible because it creates a lot of the tensions on your neck, on your back, on your sit bones, and it's important to balance that in your day, like to balance stretching, exercising, also just make sure that you're working out, go for a walk throughout the day so you don't get tight up at your desk. But a lot of times when programmers are diving into the problem, they don't tend to really want to walk away. I personally had a really hard time to just unplug and walk away and take a break. And that creates a really bad health problem because if you're sitting all the time and this is what you do for a living, the chances of you actually developing all these like long-term health issues are very high. You might be snacking a lot, Therefore, you might, you know, have a really bad diet due to sitting a lot at your desk. Now, I do notice that there are a lot of programmers now are more self-conscious and more health conscious. So they are actually, you know, implementing like a standing desk, a ergonomic chair to make sure that they're in good posture, make sure to protect your back and your neck and all of that. And that's because this job does require a very long time to sitting at your table. Number three, you hate, absolutely hate, consistently learning. If you are one of those people that hates to learn for life, you're not a self learner, you hated the fact about learning and you hate it going to school every single day, you might not really enjoy web developer as your profession. The fact to web development is that it's evolving, it's changing, it's updating so fast. Every day I feel like there's like a new framework that is coming out. So it's not going to be a easy path if you don't enjoy learning every day. Even for myself, one of my top and favorite ways for me to keep up with all the trends and all the news 
to myself is actually by listening to podcasts or reading articles and also just reading different forums about people talking about different technologies. And nowadays, it's so easy to keep up with trends, especially you know your phone is on the tip of your fingers, and you can also keep up with the trends either following on this channel as well as some other social media accounts that you can get involved into. In the tech community, dark side number four is that you hate that you can't really turn off even when you're off work. You might think this is a nine to five job, but in the real life, that is not really true. Especially if you're working for a lot of big tech companies, that they have required to have on call hours, which means that. If you are on call, you have to be available during the weekends, especially when there's emergencies happens, right? It does happen. Remember the time when Instagram just break down, or the time when some other companies got hacked. Now the schedules might be different depending on which companies that you're working for. Other than working for big tech companies, not everyone wants to work for all these big tech companies. For small or medium companies, you might feel more comfortable. But I still feel like sometimes when you are working in a project or a feature, or you investigate it in a bug, you wait to invest it into that problem, and you really try to solve it. And when you can't solve that problem, sometimes it takes you. To dinner takes you to wherever you're going. I think that it's important to unplug, and I also think that I need to get better at just unplugging and not thinking about work when I'm off work. A lot of those comes down to how do you balance from work to life? How do you manage to, you know, say no to certain things when you know that potentially that might causes you to. Burned out at the end, so you have to kind of protect that to make yourself more productive in the future. Number five, I'm gonna just break all the bad news to you. The interview process is absolutely draining and difficult, and there will be rounds and rounds and rounds of interviews. Coming along the way. Well, as we all know, that there are so many different types of web developers out there. There's different types of stacks, frameworks, and things that you can use, and therefore. The interview process is extremely complicated, and it very varies from companies to companies. So, for instance, you might be interviewing with a company that gives you a take-home challenge or take-home test for you to build out some sort of like application and send it back to them as a homework. They're going to review your code and decide if they want to move forward with you. Or you could go onto a live coding interview with other developers, and the task could be either just evaluating how well you know about React or how well you know about JavaScript or CSS. It really depending on the nature of the job, like what type of web development work you are going to be doing or expecting to do. In that company, a lot of the tech companies don't really care that much about the newest frameworks or the newest technologies.、Um, they usually have their own frameworks already built out, especially companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, all that. These tech companies don't really require. You to really know a lot of frameworks. Obviously, if you already have the work experience for it, they won't test you on that. But instead, they will give you a lot of technical interviews, like whiteboardings, especially testing you on algorithms and data structures. Which means, in order to break into these big tech companies, you have to be really, really good. At those questions, like you have to review them, you have to practice on those problems, you have to be good at communicating how you break down these problems and how you solve them. How fast are you gonna solve them? All of that. Therefore, it's just really hard for web developers to prep for all those interviews because. You just can't remember so many things all at once, so it's not easy. And again, it's not supposed to be easy, but it's something that it's pretty dark. <sighs> well, after hearing all of those bad news, I hope that you don't get discouraged 
right now to not to become a web developer. I hope that after all these dark sides that I share with you, you are still passionate about becoming a web developer just as much as I used to be. If you are a web developer and you're currently watching this, please leave the comments down below and let me know what is the darkest side of being a web developer or a software engineer. If you are currently watching this and if you are still decided that you want to go down this path to the dark side with me, then also let me know comment down yes for that. Well, are you curious about a day in a life as a web developer living in New York City just like me? Um, I have a ton of vlogs over here for you to check them out. I hope that will give you more insights about what do web developers do. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Adios.